You're about to watch a webinar that was previously produced to help you with your family history research. Now, we've edited this down a little bit just so we can get right to the point. All right, let's go. Awesome. I am so glad you're here. Well, today we're going to talk about a lot of different little strategies that you can use to help get unstuck, get organized, uh, help your research skills, and so that you can share that uh, with your family and future generations. We're going to get into all of that in a moment. What you do need to know, though, right now is that this is pre-recorded. This is not the actual live Zoom call, but uh, I have so many requests for the, uh, because they couldn't attend the live Zoom call that they wanted to see the presentation. So I can't give you the live Zoom call because I'd have to get permission from everybody in the Zoom call. And so what I'm doing here is I'm giving you the presentation uh, just without all of the questions and all of the extra people involved. So here we go. Okay, so let's get into this. So here's a little bit about me, because a lot of people kind of like, where did this woman come from? <laughs> I call myself the lifelong genealogist, here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. And for a reason, really. Um, so, you know, if you're not familiar with me, uh, my name's Connie Knox. And so if this is your first time here, welcome. Um, a lot of you know me from the YouTube channel. Uh, and so let me just give you some really fast background on uh, uh, my background in genealogy and also in television broadcasting. So um, I have been doing genealogy since I was like 15. And along the way, my career was in television broadcasting behind the scenes. I started as a production assistant in a public broadcasting station in Southern California. Uh, shout out to KOCE TV. And uh, so I started my career there uh, as a production assistant, kind of worked my way up, became an independent producer for a while. Um, ultimately, my husband and I purchased a television station uh, a, a small little station. We had a blast with it, grew it up, um, sold the TV station. The new company hired me to manage it as a CBS affiliate for the last, for the 20 years, the last 20 years I was in, um, in television. So in 20, about 2016, I decided I wanted to start transitioning to become a professional genealogist. 2018, I launched the YouTube channel and here we are, uh, you know, I mean, uh, 2020, I left broadcasting. So there was a couple years where I crossed over. So there's the, the, the skinny on me. So I have been doing the genealogy TV thing for eh, four or five, five years, really. I've been working at it. Um, and then, uh, I do a lot of volunteer work with my rotary club. So kind of that's me in a nutshell. I'm a professional photographer as well. And all right, so enough about me. Let's get on to the show. So I have some questions for you. My question is, have you found everything you can find on your ancestors? Now, of course, you don't need to be answering these questions. These are just fuel for thought kind of questions, right? So if you have not found everything, this really speaks to reasonably exhaustive research. Now, reasonably exhaustive research is one of the key components to the genealogical proof standard that's set forth by the board for certification of genealogists. Okay. So all these skills and things that we'll be talking about really kind of go back to some of the pro professional tricks, uh, and, uh, strategies that we do as professionals. Okay. My next question is, do you have a solid workflow? And this kind of goes to research process and kind of speaks to, um, do you have a clean methodical workflow to get you from point A to point B? So be thinking about that. Do you know where to look for evidence? And this really kind of speaks to records research, uh, as well as kind of any kind of evidence it could be DNA evidence as well. Um, but do you know where to look for the evidence? Do you have the research skills to break down brick walls? And this is where research strategies come in. Okay. So do you know how to do, well, I'm going to guess that maybe if you're watching this 
uh, webinar, you have some skills, but maybe not all skills. I'm not sure, but be thinking about that because once you learn the research skills, you can do this over and over and over again, generation after generation, family branch after family branch in the tree. And so uh, we're going to talk about more of that here in just a second. All right. So some of the challenges that genealogists face are kind of a lack of records, maybe uh, reading the records, you know, the old script, the, you know, or just some of the nuances that are within the records and not understanding how the records uh, work. Um, research skills in general, not knowing how to do uh, genealogy research. You don't know where to look maybe for the records or for the evidence. Um, maybe there is a lack of participation by the family. Like I don't want to talk about it or I don't want to take a DNA test or whatever the story is. You might have a, a lack of participation or Perhaps the family is not around anymore. Time might be an issue for those who are working or for whatever reason, time might be an issue. Geographic location. So maybe you are in a different location than where the records are. And so you can't physically go there uh, so easily. And so uh, just, you know, you should know that not everything is online. Um, and so there, there are tons of records that are available but you sometimes have to be there in person. So what can we do about this? We can learn smart, smart research strategies. Uh, we can gain the research skills needed to help get us unstuck. Now, can you get unstuck in every situation? No, I'll be frank. There are some times uh, that we can't solve the problem. And, you know, that's the way it is. But if you have the skills, and you understand what it is you need to do and you go through that process and you still can't get uh, unstuck, then that's, that's the way it is. But most of the time, I have had good success um, breaking down some brick walls uh, using these skills. All right, so how do we do that? How do we get unstuck? We can get organized for one. Uh, I was uh, emailing with a gentleman the other day who said, you should see my office. I got boxes everywhere. Well, we need to kind of get organized. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to like take your entire life and turn it upside down and spend the next two years, you know, trying to get all those papers and stuff in order. What you do need to do is kind of get the stuff. Well, we're going to get into that more here in a minute, but we need to get focused on, on the areas that we need to get focused on. So that's part of the process of the research, right? and not just chasing hints. So if you're new to genealogy, the little leafy hints you see on Ancestry, the hints that come in emails from FamilySearch at various places, that's the low hanging fruit. I'm gonna say that's probably 10 to 20% of what is available. And so uh, you need to really um, dig in and find all of the records that are available. I mean, you can chase the hints but there's going to be more to find. Okay. Clan research. Now, uh, clan, when I'm speaking of clan research, I'm talking about the immediate family, husband, wife, and children uh, of the immediate family, but also we want to talk about cluster research. So cluster research is also known as the fan club. Shout out to uh, Elizabeth Schoen Mills, who created that acronym. The fan club, if you're not familiar with it, is friends, associates, and neighbors. And this cluster research in combination with the immediate family research will help tie records together. Um, and that we could talk about fan club research all day long. That is, that is a huge strategy in itself. And uh, as is getting organized in the process of research, these are all um, different strategies, but when used in combination together can be very powerful. Okay. And then we want to get focused on our research and how we really dial into one, uh, target ancestor. We'll talk more about that here in a second. All right. So tips uh, for what you can do to start right now to improve your research process is to get focused on that one target ancestor. So a lot of times when we are uh, researching will, will be 
you know, chasing hints all over the tree and we'll be, you know, just popping all over the place, chasing the hints that are coming in emails and whatnot. Let's get focused. I don't know if you have to tell, I was looking for a sticky note. I don't know if you have to take a sticky note and put it on your monitor or whatever you need to do. You need to say, this is my target ancestor who I want to learn more about, whatever that is. So kind of think of it as the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Who it is that I want to uh, research. Where do I look and where are they, right? When did this occur? What is the lifespan of this person to the best of my knowledge? You know, who, what, where, when, and why. You can make up whatever that question is to create a good research question, right? And then how are you going to go about looking for it? So, you know, and it, the whole how you're going to find those records is another strategy in itself. But we want to get those records organized. So like the gentleman who had boxes all over his office and file folders everywhere, Hopefully he knows at least if he's got one target ancestor in mind, he knows exactly where to go for some of the records or all of the records, really. We want to find those records for the target ancestor only. We don't need to reorganize our entire office. We just need to find the records specific to this one research question in this one target ancestor, okay? And then gather everything we know about that target ancestor and the immediate family. So that be the, the clan, the husband, wife, and children, and maybe some siblings to that person, maybe siblings to the spouse. So let's be thinking about that. So uh, that starts to speak to the cluster research or the fan club research. So um, we want to grab all of those documents for that person and start abstracting the details. All right, so um, I get some pushback sometimes about this because people don't want to put in the work for this. But if you are really stuck on a research problem, this is part of the process that you need to go through in order to get unstuck. And there really is a method for this and there really is a reason for this. So to abstract the details from those records, you need to first transcribe. And that literally means typing it out exactly as you see it, for example, a will, Exactly as you see it, you know, you start with quotes and you put all the information in there and end with quotes and then source it as to where you got this information. Okay, so now you've got a transcription of all that information. So then you make a copy of that and you take out all the boilerplate language. That's the, you know, if, if a will starts out, I, Connie Knox, of sound mind and body, do hereby set forth my hand all of that stuff, Connie Knox is the only thing you abstract, right? I mean, all of that other boilerplate language comes out. And when you, what you're left with is all of the people that are named in the document, the dates, the places, all the stuff that is not typical boilerplate language from that is your abstract. Once you've pulled out all the boilerplate language. So you want to abstract all that information and you want to put it into your research notes. Okay, so I could talk about research notes for a week because research notes, in my opinion, I say this all the time, research notes are the most important document in your files. I keep one for every ancestor. Sometimes I'll do one on a couple if I don't, like a husband and wife couple, if I don't have um, a lot of information on them. But eventually when I start getting enough information about each person, I will break it apart into two individual sets of research notes. So research notes, you want to keep them in chronological order. That's all I'm going to say about research notes right now, but I, I promise you uh, that's a whole other strategy that um, to, to keep good quality research notes. So all that abstracted information goes in your research notes, okay? You want to get to know the Family Search Wiki. If you are not familiar with the Family Search Wiki, what you want to do is go to familysearch.org and then click on, uh, I think it's the search tab drop down to Wiki. So this is your place to go. You want to bookmark this. This is your place to go for everything in the world of questions. Where do I find a birth record about so-and-so? Where do I find a will for, you know, uh, Randolph County, North Carolina? Wherever it is, 
whatever it is, the research wiki is a great resource. Now there is another one that's not on the list here. Cindy's list is another one uh, that is a good resource. There are several good resources out there, but this is my first stop at the family search wiki. So get comfortable with it. The state archives in the area in which you are researching is another excellent location. And so you might want to start getting familiar with that. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is getting outside the box. So a lot of people like to research on whatever their favorite platform is. So in this little graphic, I'm showing it as saying get outside the Ancestry box. So if you're an Ancestry uh, user and you have worked through all of the little hints and details and all the little strategies that I've given you about Ancestry and you are still stuck or you still you know need to go farther, even if you're not stuck, get outside the box because whatever box that is, whatever platform you're on, you need to go to other platforms. It doesn't mean you have to have a subscription to every one of them. There's a lot of places you can go without being on all of them. But if you're, if you're on Ancestry, look on Family Search, look on My Heritage, look on Find My Past, whatever platform it is. Look on uh, at the state archives. Look at the county records. There's a lot of places to go outside the box. So that is my challenge for you is to look beyond the platform that you are using. They don't have all the records. I promise you there is no one platform that has everything. Okay. All right. So here's some tips, more tips to help you right now. And that is to stop just chasing hints. If you are just chasing the leafy hints and once the leafy hints are gone on your tree, uh, I'm sorry to tell you there is, you're only scratching the surface of what is available to help tell the story of your family history, okay? And please don't just go to other member trees, you know, so we need to stop looking or using other member trees as one of your first resorts, what you want to do is use it as your very last step. All right, let me explain what I'm talking about here. So with research, there's kind of a method I go through. And I'm going to use Ancestry for an example. So if you're on Ancestry and you click on a profile and you click into the search button and you get a list of things that could be records for that ancestor, the very top thing is member hints. The very first thing I do is ignore that because I don't want to be biased by the opinions of other member trees. There very well could be right. And while that's feels like the easy route, it could take you down the wrong rabbit hole. So what I do is I ignore that first, and then I go and I research all the records that could be my ancestor. Then I get outside the box and go do some more research and everything. By the time I'm done, I have put all this stuff back into my ancestry. I use ancestry as my primary, but I have, I have accounts everywhere, but Ancestry is my go-to uh, place. I use Family Search a lot. I use My Heritage a lot. I use them all, but I use all of the other ones as uh, research tools. And I will fill out the trees on those other ones in the areas in which I'm researching. So I've done all this research, right? So I come back to Ancestry after I've done all the research. I found all the records that I could find. Then I go back to Member Trees. And I use that as my last step. And I, I'm really just looking to see if I missed something. More than likely, after I go through my whole process of researching everything, more than likely I have all the records. Every now and then, there might be a photograph or something that another member has uploaded that I didn't have. But the reality is, by the time I'm done, and I don't mean to sound arrogant here, but by the time I'm done doing my research process, all the other member trees are copying from me because I did the deeper dive. I did the deeper dig and found the records that weren't so easily found on the low hanging fruit in the hints. Now I will go chase those hints as well because it is easy to grab that first. But I also do all of these other digging deeper kind of research uh, methods 
to really kind of um, sew the fabric, if you will, of the family history. Okay, so other member trees are my last step. All right. One of the things you need to also do is start to understand the records. So to learn how the records were kept, where they were kept, uh, what symbols and acronyms mean within the records, what, you know, some of the language, like in a, in a will, some of the language might be unique. Um, and to find the original source. So kind of learning how each record set works uh, is really important, okay? Correlating your evidence is one of the steps that you'll need to take to really uh, weave that fabric together, okay? So here is an example, this is super simplistic, um, example of correlating evidence um, of the fan club for a fake family, right? John Doe and his wife Jane Doe and his son John Doe Jr. I totally made this up, but you get the idea um, it shows the name, the age at the time of the record that was created, um, the record date, um, the source. So the very top line there is John Doe and it is a Civil War muster roll. And I could leave a link in there if I wanted to or some sort of source citation as to where to find that. Now, depending on the types of records and types of correlation that you want to do, this could expand greatly to be many columns. The cool part about doing this in either an Excel or a Google Sheets kind of program is that you can sort this, this document. So I have done extensive research on some of my ancestors where I might have the whole community in an Excel spreadsheet and then I can filter by name, which is kind of cool. So um, that helps you truncate or find other family members that you may not have been aware of in the community. And then you can really start to put together this network of family uh, using correlating evidence uh, and doing this for census records or whatever. Okay. All right. So your mission, should you decide to accept it? would be to get to know the Family Search Wiki, the Ancestry card catalog, whether you're a member or not, you should learn how to use the card catalog at Ancestry. And I believe you probably would need at least a free guest account to do that. Um, but it is uh, very helpful uh, in finding records. Get comfortable with, all right, I'm gonna stop right there for a second. I want you to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, okay? Because there are some places that are going to be difficult to navigate. Uh, I think State Archives Online is probably one of the more challenging ones because there's just so much information on there that the websites can feel a little daunting at first. So you need to get comfortable with the State Archives in the areas or states in which you are researching or the countries maybe in which you are researching. Uh, and this is the also the states in which your target ancestor. So we talked about that in the beginning, your target ancestor, what is your research question and who is it that you're trying to solve for? And so you really want to get to understanding uh, the states in which your target ancestor lived and what resources are there, including county records in the counties not only the county in which your ancestor lived, but the surrounding counties, because it might be border changes happened or who the parent county is for that county, because it might be the records are actually held in a different county or at the state archives. Okay. So I want you to start abstracting facts. I promise you when you transcribe and then abstract the facts out of documents. It will make you pay attention to details you never saw before. Even if it's something as simple as a death certificate, when you actually type out everything that you see, you will suddenly go, oh, wait a minute. The informant has the same last name. Maybe they're related. Oh, wait a minute. Further research shows that's a sister or that's a spouse or that's a wife or, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so abstract the facts because I promise you it will work and make sure you put them in your research notes in chronological order. 
because then as you're going through your research process and you go, well, wait a minute, I got a 20 year gap here in this lifespan. What was the last thing I knew about him and where does he show up again? Okay, I got, let me see if I can figure this out from point A to point B. And your research notes, you can skip through all the stuff, you, you know, that the, that is before and after just to kind of focus in on the time frame in which you're really uh, trying to research. So, I mean, research notes in chronological order. I can't say it enough. Okay. And this is of your target ancestor. All right. So one of the things you want to do too is focus on the target ancestor and all the records in the path. So if your target ancestor is uh, this couple right here, then you want to make sure that you have the path and you might even want to make sure that, that you know, the cluster research or fan club research would be not only the family and siblings, if you don't know who the parents are, but you, you know, you can find some information about this couple and or uh, the family in the fan club. So I'm just pointing that out. Okay. So hopefully going through all of that process, you will be able to find success in breaking down some of those brick walls or maybe just climbing over them. Okay. So eventually you do need to understand that someday the record trail, you know, the paper trail is going to run dry and you are going to hit the end of the line, uh, as far as records that are available. And it might be that more records come to light later on. Or they get unearthed from some basement in some county courthouse somewhere or whatever. But, you know, you have to come to the realization that eventually, uh, you know, you will co come to a dead end. Uh, it could be hundreds of years or not. But um, anyway, so you just need to be mindful of that. But you have to do that reasonably exhaustive research to discover whether you have hit the line or not. All right. So my question for you is, have you found everything? Now, again, this is rhetorical questions. You do not need to answer them. Um, but, uh, you know, it's fuel for thought. Have you done your reasonably exhaustive research on your target ancestor? And do you have a solid workflow, the research process? Do you know where to look for all of the evidence? and where to uh, research those records. So my uh, next question for you is, do you have the research skills to break down those brick walls? Generation after generation, branch after branch. So do you have the skills needed to help you with those family history problems? Now I'm gonna show you a clip from another webinar where you can learn the skills needed to help you with those problems. Once you learn the secret sauce, it's really best practices that you can use over and over and over again. These are skills you can learn. Yes, you can. So let's go check it out. If you're interested in learning more about research skills, let me tell you this funny story because this is kind of the whole premise for why I do what I do. I am a photographer. I like to take pictures. It's mostly a hobby, uh, but I like to take wildlife photography, you know, pictures of bears and birds and fox and whatever I can, nature photography. You know, I like, you know, landscapes and, and scenery and stuff. And so I belong to a local camera club. And this is kind of, this is kind of silly, but this is why I started doing the Genealogy TV YouTube channel was because every time I went to a camera club meeting, the conversation went from cameras to genealogy and people kept asking me the same questions over and over again. And I kept, I kept the, you know, well, you know, I'm answering the same questions over again. I ought to just create a video. And then the light bulb went off and I said, well, wait a minute, maybe I could create a video. I've got the skills from my time in television broadcasting. Let's, and I love doing video production and I love genealogy. It's kind of a, a marriage made in heaven when I created the Genealogy TV YouTube channel. And so that's one of the reasons why I started because the camera club meetings kept going to genealogy research questions, uh, you know, during our social time together. So that's, that's a true story as to why I started uh, the Genealogy TV Academy. 
So one of the things I started looking at when I was researching to do the uh, Genealogy TV YouTube channel was that the, no one was really teaching skills necessarily. Uh, certainly not on YouTube. They were teaching a lot of things about how to do your German research or how to do your French research or similar, you know, kind of things, but they weren't really teaching the skills that I thought people should learn in order to really be able to take their research back. So um, that's kind of why I started creating that uh, Genealogy TV Academy so that I could really dig in deep and help teach the research skills needed to take your genealogy back uh, generation after generation. So I created the Genealogy TV Academy and uh, launched it in March of 2022. All right, so if you wanna learn the skills and get organized and do record research, evidence analysis, evidence correlation. So we take the evidence, right? We really dig into it and we learn about what the little hidden gems are that are in the, in the records that a lot of times kind of like reading between the lines, right? It's, it's some of the information that we can learn from the records based on the information that's there, but then goes one step further and some of the things that we can deduce from those records. And then we can take each one of those records and compare them to each other. That's what evidence correlation is, is when we're comparing the facts and we're comparing the evidence. That is correlation of evidence because that is a skill in itself and teaches you how to prove uh, pieces of your lineage based on the correlation of evidence. And then we talk about documentation and what we find. And we talk about all the different research tools that are available to us and research strategies. So these are the skills that you can learn at the Genealogy TV Academy. And this will help you take your tree back further. Re really, once you learn these skills for one ancestor, you can do it ancestor after ancestor, generation after generation, and take it back as far as the paper trail will let you, okay? So this is all taught at the Genealogy TV Academy online. It is, uh, two components to the Genealogy TV Academy. There's the self-guided course and the live classroom. It is a monthly membership. So once you're in, you have it all at your access. So um, the self-guided courses, there's two of them. One's called Getting Started in Genealogy. The other one is called Smart Research. And so Getting Started obviously is a beginner's course. And then the Smart Research is an everybody course because it doesn't matter what level you're at, the smart research skills that we teach there are a guided path, both in the, in the getting started and the smart research is a guided path to take you further with your skills. These all have lessons and videos and handouts and worksheets to help you go through it. Now it is free form. You can jump around as you wish. If you feel like you've already got, uh, a good handle on a lesson, you can skip over it and go to another lesson. It's all uh, easy and free form for you to do at your own pace. Then there is also the live classroom presentations. Those are held monthly. We have one a month uh, on teaching a different skill. Those are held the first Wednesday at 3 p.m. And uh, yes, they are recorded. So if you are not able to attend or perhaps you're working or you have other commitments, uh, you can uh, watch the recording later, but if you want to participate in the live presentation, those are at 3 p.m. Eastern on the first Wednesday of every month. The total value of all of this with the getting started and the smart research self-guided courses and the monthly live classroom uh, sessions, the value there is $3,100 annually. Like I said, this is a monthly uh, membership and with that also we have a Q&A because a lot of people have questions. So I have what I call office hours and uh, those are once a month and they are an hour each and they are also on Zoom. And those are the third Wednesday of each month at 3 p.m. And yes, those two are recorded. So if you were to send in your questions in advance, I will answer them on the live presentation or you can also join the Zoom class live and ask questions right off the cuff and I will do my best to answer them. So that's all 
both the live presentation and the live q a is uh, once a month each so we meet every couple of weeks and so with that the value annually brings us to fifty five hundred dollars uh, a year and the handouts and the worksheets also are invaluable those uh, come with each of the live presentations um, and there's a lot of information available in those to help you work through your research problems and help you really think through some of your uh, research questions that you're working on. There's also the private Facebook group. It's called the Genealogy TV Insiders. And this is a great place where you can ask questions immediately. You don't have to wait for the Q&A session. And so you can jump on there and ask a question and everybody in the community is invited to help answer. If they know the answer, jump in and help answer questions. I try to get in there every day and answer questions, but a lot of times the community answers them immediately because there's a lot of people that are hanging out on Facebook on a regular basis and they have it open all the time. And so when they see somebody pop in with a question, they'll jump in and answer. Collectively, with the handouts now and the insider group uh, added to it, that brings us to an annual uh, value of $6,700 with everything included. And again, everything is included with your membership. So my question for you is how much is it worth to you to have the confidence in your family tree, to be able to find your ancestors, to break down those brick walls? To get organized, that's a big one for a lot of people is to learn how to get organized, learn how to find the records efficiently, and use those same skills over and over again, ancestor after ancestor, generation after generation, so that you can share your family history with confidence. So I would love to know in the chat window or in the comments sections what you think that is worth to you. Collectively, we're at $6,700 annually. Membership is $59 a month. That is quite a savings. But right now, I am offering it for $44.25 a month. That is a 25% discount on your membership for the life of your membership. So as long as you're a member, you'll have it at that rate. And it's a one price fits all. You get all of the stuff in the Genealogy TV Academy. If that is something that is of interest to you, go to genealogytv.org forward slash academy. You'll click on the get started button and you'll use the promo code GTVA25 and then use the percent symbol. That is your promo code GTVA25% to get the discount code on the membership right now. So when you go to Genealogy TV Academy, uh, genealogytv.org forward slash academy, this is what you'll see. You click on the red button to join. Don't forget to use the GTVA, that's for Genealogy TV Academy, 25% is your co promo code. So I want you to know that we are committed to your learning. We are committed to helping you with your genealogical journey, okay? And once you start to learn these skills, you'll start to see uh, the genealogy TV happy dance popping into your head. You'll be like, Woo we got it figured out. Yay, we found some, some things. So one of the things I have for you is a guarantee. Your satisfaction is our priority, right? So if you change your mind and you are not satisfied for any reason, just send us an email within 14 days of your purchase and we'll give you a full refund within 24 business hours. That is my guarantee to you, okay? So if you sign up today, you will also get three free handouts. They are 10 tips to breaking down brick walls and getting unstuck, how to, get, uh, how to create great research notes, how to group your DNA matches on Ancestry into four groups of your grandparents, so you, that's like four branches of the family tree. And so those three handouts are available to you as a bonus gift uh, for signing up today. Collectively, that brings our annual total to uh, 67.75. And again, right now you can get it for 44.25 a month. That is uh, a huge discount 
and I try and make it as affordable as I can for everybody. And so if that is something that you are interested in, uh, I hope that's something you'll consider. So my question is, are you ready? Are you ready to stop making mistakes and to get organized and to prove your lineage, learn those research skills so that you have the confidence in your research and in your family tree so that you can share it with your family and future generations. Quite frankly, I'm thinking of my family tree as I am creating it for future generations that I'll never meet. These are people that aren't even born yet. And so uh, that is my goal. And so when you join the Genealogy TV Academy, you'll get unlimited use of all the courses during your membership. You will have new lessons every month. You will have access to the live Zoom meetings where you can ask questions. We have the Q&A sessions. We have access to all of the past sessions that you haven't attended yet. Um, because there's a ton of information there that you can access right now, right today. And of course the handouts and the worksheets and access to the Genealogy TV Insiders group. This is a private group. You won't find them if you search them, you have to be invited. Okay. So this is a limited time offer. It is only available, uh, for a short time. So I suggest that if you want to get in, you get in now. Okay. And with that, let me ask, uh, answer a few of the frequently asked questions. And the one of which I get is who's teaching the courses. I am, I'm teaching all of the courses right now. Uh, if you like what you've been seeing on the genealogy TV, YouTube channel, then I think you'll appreciate what you're finding in the zoom presentations as well as what you find in the online courses. And I will be adding some more instructors with time and uh, to give you kind of a different, um, a different perspective on, on some of the skills that we teach. Okay. Uh, the courses are, all of them are recorded and available. Is this, this is a question I get a lot. Is this the same as the Genealogy TV membership on YouTube? No, it is not the same. And so those are completely different. And so that question really is referring to the genealogy TV memberships, either at the support level or at the information access level, the information access level folks over there on YouTube, um, get the handouts. They are different. 95% of the stuff is different. There might be a tiny bit of crossover, um, once in a while, but for the most part, they are completely separate. And that same, it's the same as, uh, it's separate for the Patreon folks. No, <laughs> it's, it's not the same. So how long will this presentation be available? Uh, for a very short time, I, it, it's really only going to be available probably for about a week. So, uh, depending on when you're, when you are uh, attending this presentation. So, uh, now's your chance to get that, uh, 25% off. Okay. And so if you have any questions, you are feel free to um, ask them uh, at help at genealogytv.org. I would be glad to try and get in. Either me or Ashley will try and get in and answer your questions as quickly as we can. Okay. And with that, I really appreciate you attending today. Thank you so much. And we will see you hopefully at the Academy. All right. We'll see you later.